Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have some more Dollar Tree Fall Farmhouse DIYs for you. I am so excited for you guys to see these projects. I love them so much. I made little barn doors with the actual barn door hardware and some other things to go with it. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely keep watching. Also, don't forget to do the youtube -y things. If you're new here, my name's Melissa. I am so grateful that you're here. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs farmhouse decor, and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely stick around and become part of my crafty family by clicking that red subscribe button and then just tap the bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload. I also do giveaways several times a month on my channel as well. So with all that being said, let's jump into today's DIY. Okay friends, so I just want to let you guys know this is a little bit of a longer video, um, but there's a lot of moving parts, so I definitely edited it down as much as I could, but I didn't want to edit out too much so you guys couldn't see like what I was doing. So I start off with my Dritz Home staple pull that I did get from Walmart. I don't know what I was talking about in my last video when I said I got it from Walmart and Dollar Tree. Who knows? Anyway, I pull the staples out where the handles were and then I mark all the way down the sign on three signs the middle. That way, when I go to cut them in half, then I know that they are nice and straight. So I take my Cricut. I believe this is a... I don't know what it's called, you guys. But basically, you lay it down and then you just use the edge of that little tool to cut a nice straight line and then once I scored it about five times I flipped it over bent it and then cut it down the back where the paper is now some of these the paper just came right off so if that was the case I went ahead and removed that and threw those away and then I took my mouse zip sander you guys i love this brand i have every single one of their zip sanders they're just so good the handle is amazing so i love all of them but anyway i go ahead and i just sand all of the edges smooth next i lay three of the pieces down side by side and i take my poplar and i cut those down to have a piece at the top and at the bottom and i did do two of these um, shutters so once i had those cut down then once again i take my zip sander i sand the edges smooth and then give all of the pieces of the Dollar Tree signs a coat of my cashew Waverly chalk paint um, but I do do kind of like a distress coat that way some of that brown is showing through next I take those pieces of poplar that I had cut down and I use my homemade stain and I stain those brown first and I do this for a few reasons so once I have these quote unquote stained then I'm going to go in with that same cashew and I'm going to give it a distressed coat that way it can all look cohesive I also like this effect because with that brown showing through it just looks old and weathered but if you don't like that look you can always just use the faux stain or use your pieces as is with that natural wood it's totally up to you but for me and my project I wanted everything to look nice and flawless and seamless so that is why I use this technique Once everything was dry, then I take my longer pieces and my zip sander once again and I just sand those edges down once again to make it look old and weathered. And also when I butt these together, I wanted you to be able to see that these are separate pieces really, really well. And when I had put them together essentially and was about to glue them together, um, the cashew paint just kind of ran together and you couldn't really see that they were separate pieces so 
Um, once I sanded those down, I laid three of them side by side. I also laid out my pieces of poplar at the top and the bottom, and then once I had them in the spot that I liked, then I went ahead and I glued them down with some hot glue. I also made sure that they were evenly spaced at the top and the bottom once again so that so that way they looked flawless. Okay guys, so this is how my projects work. I was going to stop there with the barn doors and then I said, okay, well they would be really cute with wreaths on the front of them. So I take these two bamboo wreaths from Dollar Tree. I pull out some greenery from here, there, and everywhere. So I got some eucalyptus from Walmart. I also pulled out um, some different picks from Dollar Tree and I glued down the greenery first. Next, I take these berries from Dollar Tree, I clip those off of the picks, and I also arrange those around the wreath. Now, in the end, I ended up taking out those little faux berries. I just didn't really like the way that they looked, but if you like that look, then you can totally customize your wreath however you like it. But in the end, I ended up taking those out and I put in the cattails as well as some leaves from a different pick from Walmart. I just kind of clipped a few off and I glued those down to the wreath. I thought that they just looked much better than those little red berries, but again, this is totally your preference. So anytime you ever see projects that you can just tweak a little bit to fit your decor and your style better then that's totally up to you i think people get caught up on trying to do a project exactly how us creators do it but you can easily change these to however you like them so once i had the leaves where i wanted them then i went in and i arranged the cattails and i was gonna stop there but i said okay well i think it needs just a little something else so then i added in these small little pumpkins from dollar tree i just clipped off most of that little wooden skewer or pick <laughs> from the bottom and then i left a little bit so that i could um, stick it into the bamboo wreath and I just put those all the way around still felt that it was missing something so I took these real wheat stems from Dollar Tree and I cut those off as well and then arranged those around the wreath as well and I did this for both of them Next, I take this ribbon from Dollar Tree. I thought that this beautiful color just popped on this wreath. Now, I'm not gonna lie, you guys. I was not too sure about this ribbon. I asked several of my friends, actually my subscribers who have become some of my best friends what they thought and they all loved this ribbon so I just went ahead outside of my comfort zone and went with it so I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to make a simple bow all you have to do is just take a piece of ribbon and fold it over on each other kind of on a diagonal pinch it in the middle and then take some jute in the back and tie it together you then just fluff it up and then you can cut your tails however you like but for me personally i love the way that the dovetails look and then i attached it to the top of both of my wreaths now once again i was going to stop here <laughs> but i had seen um these barn doors and I knew that I wanted to recreate them so I take eight popsicle sticks of the large type I cut those down in half and then cut off the ends and then I took these little party favors from Dollar Tree they're these little rings and I pop off the plastic cap so I then take my pop dot stickers and I put the pop dots onto my popsicle sticks only on four of them because four of them you're going to use for the backs 
So once I had them on my popsicle sticks, the way that barn door hinges look, then I attached the little plastic caps to the back of the four popsicle sticks, and then I painted everything black. I also took two small stir sticks and painted those black as well. You also want to reinforce these little black caps in the back just so that way you can ensure that nothing goes anywhere. I've also seen Sarah from um, Peppermint Cactus do this. Obviously, you guys, she's one of my favorite creators. I don't watch many, but you guys, she is extremely talented, so definitely go check her out. The thing she does with foam core board is just, it, it literally blows my mind. So definitely check her out and let her know that I sent you. But once I had everything painted, then I go in with my gold acrylic paint and I just highlight all of the edges with some dry brushing. Next, I glue down my wreath to the middle and then I flip my barn door over I attach two of the popsicle sticks to the back kind of in the middle of each side of the pieces if that makes sense and if I don't make any sense you can see what I'm doing here next I attach the small popsicle stick or not popsicle stick <laughs> I attach the small stir stick to the front of the previous pieces that I glued to the back and then I take my little faux hinges and I attach those to the front. Now originally I had glued the back pieces down too far up if that makes sense so I did have to go in and cut those down so make sure that you just glue them down like far enough down to the back of the sign and then you can go ahead and glue your front pieces on. So last but not least, I go back in with my gold acrylic paint and I just dry brush my barn door. The one, the one that I already attached my wreath to, I had to kind of just go around the wreath, which was no big deal, but I did want everything to just look cohesive and pretty much the same on one side and the other and you guys look how amazing these barn doors are i love them so much i will probably change out the wreath from season to season so this is totally customizable you can use them for every season or just fall it's totally up to you so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this project Okay friends, so I would love to thank someone for the craft supplies. It didn't have a name, it literally just said someone. And if you enjoy my work and would like to support my channel and get a shout out on my next video, go to the link in the description box below or you can follow this link on the screen. But I always tell you guys, you do not have to support me monetarily. You can support your favorite creators so many different ways. You can like their videos, share it with your family and friends if you think they would like it. You can give the videos a big thumbs up, watch the ads, click on the ads because that's how we get paid. So there's so many different ways to support us and whatever way you support me, I appreciate each and every one of you. So moving on to the next project, I take these three signs that I got from Dollar Tree back when like the patriotic decor was out and I just start by taking my heat gun and taking off those little hearts. I then attach it at the back with some hot glue and some large popsicle sticks. Because a little bit of glue had seeped through, I did just go in with my sander and sand that down smooth. And then, you guys, I don't know how this happened, but 
I had these trim pieces from a different project that I had already stained. So I did just go ahead and cut them down to size for the frame. I did have to cut one that was not already stained. So I went ahead and stained that once I had those cut down. And then I go over that brown with some ink Waverly chalk paint. I then go in with my gold Arteza acrylic paint and I dry brush all of my pieces. Now a little trick that I have found is if you leave one side that you're going to glue down to your sign just plain, you don't paint it or anything, even if your pieces are not dry and you're ready to glue them down, because that part is not wet, then you can go ahead and glue that down. Plus you save a little bit of paint. So here lately, I have just been not worrying about the fourth side of my dowel rods. I then paint my sign with my lacquer waverly chalk paint it's like a maroonish color and then i take my large buffalo check chalk couture transfer with big transfers like this if you put it sticky side up and then just fuzz it that way instead of taking your transfer and laying it down on your fuzzing cloth it's much much easier and i also get a lot of questions what the fuzzing cloth is for you want to put a little bit of fuzz on your transfer that way when you go to pull it up it doesn't stretch and ruin your transfer so i did just transfer that on with my shimmer gold and then a little piece was missing so I did just take that transfer off and I laid it at the bottom and finished the pattern. Now I did do a distress coat. I didn't want it perfect. I wanted it to look rustic and weathered just like the rest of my projects. So once I was done that I set that aside and took this long sign from Dollar Tree. It, it was in like the picture frame section and it says days until the wedding but I just flip it over I cut off the tags and fill in those holes now because there was nothing holding in the spackling in the back I just put a little bead of hot glue and then continued with this lightweight spackle from Dollar Tree I then give this a distressed coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint next I take my autumn sayings transfer and I cut off the saying that I wanted I was going back and forth between this one and the hello pumpkin but I ultimately decided it I ultimately decided on this one fall is in the air and I take it off of the backing sheet fuzz it and then I go in with my dune chalk paste as well as my jade so I do the wording with the dune and I do the greenery with my jade once I squeegee on my chalk paste, then it's time to peel and reveal. And this is my favorite part about Chalk Couture. That crisp, clean image that you get every single time. It literally never gets old. And I will have all of the products that I use as far as Chalk Couture in my link tree link in the description box below. You'll see all of my links are here, Shop Chalk Couture, something like that. So I then just dry brush some of that cashew around the edges as well as a little bit in the middle of the sign and then I take four Jenga blocks. I glue those to the back and then glue that down to the right hand bottom corner. And then that was it for this, you guys. Look how gorgeous this is. I love this sign so, so much, and I cannot wait to put it up for fall. So let me know in the comments down below. Would you guys have put the little fall is in the air sign where I put it, or would you put it in the middle of the sign? So each week on my channel, I thought that it would be really fun to show you guys my earrings of the week. This has been a little series that I have been doing for a while now. So this week's earrings of the week, my sweet friend Jennifer sent them to me. You guys, she sells Scentsy and the scents are off the charts. They're so good. I have a warmer in my shed. I also have a warmer in the house. 
So if you guys need some Sensi, definitely let me know and I would love to forward her information for you. Also, if you have a small business that you would like me to promote, I would love to help you guys out. So definitely send me a message and I would be more than happy to do that for you. So she sent me these. I actually have these in gold, but I do not have them in silver. So I got, um, they're from Walmart and she knows that I love Walmart earrings. So she's definitely paying attention but they're very lightweight they have this beautiful design on them and I love the silver because I can wear them with like gray shirts so I'm a gold jewelry kind of girl but I do like to wear silver whenever like my outfit goes along with it so I thought they were perfect for today's outfit being that I'm wearing a gray shirt so if you would like to send me a pair of earrings to feature on the earrings of the week Check the description box below. My PO box information is down there. So with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. Okay guys, so for the last project, I take this smaller 3D wreath form from Dollar Tree and I am not going to lie, you guys, this is a little bit tricky to get that little silver piece on it to keep it open the way that it's supposed to be. But just take your time and be patient. You want to kind of spread out the pieces and then take that metal piece that it gives you. It gives you two pieces for the top and the bottom, but we're only going to use one. And it's got these little... I don't know what you want to call it, but basically you're just going to spread out each of the pieces and then you're going to take that metal piece and wrap it around. That way it keeps it open. So if that makes no sense whatsoever, because it's a lot harder to explain, then you can just watch it back. And as long as you take your time, you will get it. I believe in you and I know you can do it. So once I have the bottom part um, put together, I flip it over and then I cut two of the, I guess you want to call them uh, the round pieces. I don't really know what to call it. I cut those with my wire cutters and then I put my 14 millimeter wood beads on every other one. So essentially, it's going to be the same piece on either side that you had just cut. And then once I had the beads all the way up on each side, then I secure them with some hot glue. Next, I take some jute at the top and I'm just going to reinforce all of those pieces together with my jute. So there was no rhyme or reason. I just kind of wove it in and out and all the way around until it was put together really nicely. I then just tied a knot in my jute a few times to make sure it didn't go anywhere and cut off the excess and secured it down with some hot glue. Next, I take this little square wooden piece that one of my sweet subscribers sent me and I paint it with that same lacquer color. While the paint is still wet, I take the tip of my brush and just lightly uh, get some of that cashew on the end of my brush. I dab off the excess and then I put some of that cashew into the wet paint to make it look distressed. Next, I glue down our little sphere down onto that square piece and I pull out my buffalo check ribbon with the same color scheme that we did our sign and basically the same color of the ribbon from Dollar Tree and I just glue that down to the pieces that did not have any beads on them. So once I had the top part covered with my ribbon. I then go in and I do the back side. That way when you are looking at this, you can't see that these pieces are metal. Once that was complete, then I go back and I just reinforce the edges with some hot glue to make them look seamless. I then take a uh, circle wooden piece. I believe I got these at Walmart. They're pretty cheap and I drill a hole in the middle with my drill bit. 
I make sure that it's going to fit down onto this because at the bottom and the top, I guess that's how these spheres stay together. There's like a longer piece of metal. So in order to get this uh, wooden piece over it, that's why you drill the hole. I then paint that with the same red color lacquer and dry brush it with my cashew. I then glue it down with some hot glue. Next, with some hot glue, I take some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree and I just kind of put those down into the crevice in between the square wooden piece and the circle wooden piece just to cover up any imperfections at the bottom and that way you can't see that this is a piece of metal. Once I had that done, then I took this stem from a pumpkin from Dollar Tree, I pull it off and then secure it to the top with some hot glue. In order to put some leaves on my pumpkin, I took this yard stake from Dollar Tree and clipped off those little metal leaves. I then painted it with my Moss Waverly chalk paint front and back as well as the top of the metal part. Once the paint was dry, then I go in with my mini chip brush and that same cashew and dry brush it all the way around the leaves as well as I use some antique wax to do the exact same thing. Next, I just used some hot glue to attach those leaves where I thought that they looked best. To cover up the jute at the top, I just go in with some of that Spanish moss from Dollar Tree once again and just fill in those holes, making it all look cohesive. I then take some berry garland from Dollar Tree in the green and the white. I wrap it around a skewer and then I pull it off, cut it down in half and then glue those in where I saw fit as well. I then take another one of these banner pieces. I used these in my last video and I cut off the holes at the top just with a utility knife by scoring it just a few times. It's very thin so these cut nice and easily and then I cut it in half and cut off that diagonal edge. I then sand down the edges nice and smooth. Prior to that, I make sure that my little thankful and blessed is going to fit on there. I give this a good coat of that same cashew and dry brush it with the lacquer, and then I transfer on my little design. Now these transfers are called the Autumn Phrases Trio, but you guys, there are so many options on my chalk site. So if you would like to check that out, just go to the description box below, go to my link tree, and then you can check out my site and see all the different designs they have. So a little trick I thought I would show you guys, if you have a light pad and you put your piece down on it and then lay your transfer on, you're gonna be able to line that up beautifully. Sometimes you can't really see like where you're laying your transfer and you don't wanna transfer it on crooked. So I thought that I would just give you guys this little tip because this has been a game changer for me. 
So I transfer on the wording with my black chalk paste and then obviously the greenery with that same jade that I used in the last say little saying. Next, I had my little helper help me glue down this sign to the front of this green candle that I got at Walmart that I use a lot to stage my stuff. And then I take some jute and I just wrap it around the top a couple times and tie a simple little bow at the top. Next, I'd go in with my drill bit and just drill a hole at the bottom of this candle. That way it can fit in the middle of our faux little pumpkin very easily and it can all fit together nicely. And then literally, you guys, that was it for this project. There are a there are a lot of moving parts to it, but it really did not take me long at all. I love the way that this turned out. I was kind of unsure of it. I was kind of unsure of it at first, but now that I'm seeing it on camera, I absolutely love this and I cannot wait to put it out for fall. So let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite per usual. Thank you guys so much for being here. I know I tell you all the time, but I just want to express that I love and appreciate every single one of you. If you could please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I see a lot of you watch, but you don't subscribe, so you might as well become part of my crafty family. That way you don't miss another Dollar Tree or holiday moment, or giveaway, or haul. There's so many things that you can get out of my channel, and I would love to have you. So, with all that being said, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning, you are worthy and special, and I love you with all my heart and soul, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!